Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us in this health suppliers segment. You know, 844 million people don't have access to clean water. One in three people on this planet don't have a decent toilet. In this health supplier segment, Serena Prabasi, CEO of WaterAid America, is a nonprofit with the goal of bringing clean water, sanitation, and hygiene to over 37 countries across the globe. She's joining us today on the program to talk about WASH. I'll let her explain uh, what WASH is and give our listeners a little bit of background about yourself. Welcome to the program, Serena Prabasi. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You've already uh, told your listeners the statistics. They're quite alarming. And uh, when we say WASH uh, as a solution, we talk about water, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, And we talk about them together because together they have the biggest impact on uh, positive health outcomes. So um, water by itself, clean water by itself is great, very necessary. Sanitation and toilets, very necessary. Um, Good hygiene practice, as simple as hand washing with soap. Um, can prevent many, many of the diseases that people are literally dying from. So uh, we package that together and we call it WASH. And at WaterAid, our focus is uh, exactly on that water, sanitation, and hygiene. Are you a healthcare professional in in, uh, any way other than providing or endeavoring to provide clean water? And what was it that got you into providing clean water with all of the uh, many things that a person could find themselves involved with? It's a great question. Uh, when I first, I lived in Ethiopia when I first got involved with Water Aid, and I, I still remember when I was applying for the role then of the country director for Water Aid's Ethiopia office, thinking, well, you know, the organization just focuses on water. I wonder if that's going to be limiting. Uh, and, uh, you know, over the years, and I'm now in a different role, but still with the organization, um, I found that water connects to almost everything that I cared about. It, connected to um, women's rights and gender, you know, keeping girls in school. Uh, It's connected to health, uh, a very strong connection to health and well-being. Uh, So many, so many um, unnecessary diseases and infections are caused by simply a lack of safe uh, water in an unclean environment. Um, As you and your listeners know, diarrhea caused by poor water and poor toilets kills uh, children all over the world. So definitely a link to healthcare, link to um, just human well-being and and getting out of poverty. And you know, if if all of us had to spend uh, many hours a day thinking about where we were going to collect our water or where we were going to go to the bathroom, our lives would be very different. So um, to me, water and sanitation really is a foundational step uh, for people uh, to tra- change their lives and change the options and opportunities that they have. And that's what's kept me in this space working on this issue because I really found that it connects with many, many other issues that I um, care about. Um, I'm not a healthcare professional. Uh, I um, studied social sciences (laughs) in my undergrad, but our organization and our issue is one that is very directly connected to the provision of quality healthcare. Um, and in, you know, some places where I've traveled and worked, I've seen, I visited a, a, a healthcare clinic once where the doctor said to me, well, I have to go home and wash my hands because we don't have the water um, here in the clinic. Wow. And it, you know, when you hear that, that is very shocking. Or, um, you know, you see here in the U.S. Uh, when women are going to give birth, they have a, a hospital bag. And they they pack that to go to the hospital. Um, when I worked in Ethiopia, I saw women that in addition to whatever else they wanted to take for the hospital, their families were charged with carrying a certain amount of water to the healthcare facility because you had to bring your own water. Um, and so some of these things seem so shocking and unthinkable in our current um, lives here, but but uh, for me, they've been really transformational in how I think about water and sanitation and what a big difference um, not having these things can make to just what our options are in life. You know, you're talking about options, you know, here in the United States, uh, places in Britain, you know, developed countries, we don't understand how it is not to have clean water at our disposal at least 99% of the time. 
In these places where we're talking about healthcare facilities that don't have clean water, am I to assume that there are places there that do have clean water? And if so, why is it that a hospital can lack clean water and other folks have clean water if that is the case? And if it is, why is that the case? Yeah, it's a matter of it's a matter of consistency in the rural areas in many places, you know, nobody has access to um clean water the way we think of it, right? You have to go and collect the water. Um sometimes when healthcare centers are being designed, the the way that water was planned is faulty uh, or it wasn't planned or it wasn't planned properly, but in some cases it's a, just a matter of the the infrastructure isn't there, the way that the infrastructure is here. And and even here we have problems with the infrastructure, but it's a it's just a very different scale. Um, a lot of times, um, healthcare facilities, yeah, sometimes water water can just be a forgotten thing, or it's not reliable. You'll have it today, you won't have it tomorrow. Well, if you're a patient that came tomorrow, that's <laughs> then that's not yeah, that's that's unacceptable. So that's really and and it's it's not the case everywhere, but it's still a significant problem, and it's one that we've really highlighted um, water and sanitation in healthcare facilities. We also focus on water and sanitation in schools, as you can imagine, in schools as well. Um, all kinds of problems from, you know, kids not being able to concentrate because they're thirsty or not being able to concentrate because they need to go to the bathroom and there's no place to go. Um, so some of these things that we don't automatically think about, um, but those are, those are areas and also in communities and households. So we, we really focus on water, sanitation, hygiene access wherever, in the home, in the school, in the hospital, everywhere that it's needed. Um, and it's something that is, um, that, is, that is sometimes difficult to explain, but also in, in some ways it's easy for people to understand no matter where you live, because all of us, we felt thirsty. We've, we, know, we, know that we, we know that we need water uh, in our daily lives. We know how important our bathrooms are to us. So in a way, it's something that everybody can relate to because um, it's something that we all experience personally. What would you say is the biggest challenge when it comes to uh, providing clean water in some of these places that may never have it without outside help or some type of help? And um, some of the, I guess, educational barriers. I mean, you, you, folks have to be educated on how to... Um, obtain and maintain clean water once uh, they have access to it. Yeah, so um, really a very important part of our work is about, um, um, particularly on the hygiene side, hygiene education. Um, the the simple act of hand washing with soap is something that uh, often um, people are not aware of or, you know, obviously if there isn't ready access to water, then washing your hands becomes uh, a more difficult than a simple activity. Um, but yeah, uh, education is a, is a sort of core part, as is um, working with communities to really plan for the long term. So it's not just about digging a well today, but as you say, about how that will be maintained over time, who will take responsibility, how will the money be collected, um, most of the places where we work, you know, people are incredibly resourceful. People are very um, willing to do their part and um, they need help from whether it's, you know, the government or organizations like us, but really they're very willing to um, to do their part. And in places where we work, we have communities that have, you know, if the source of the water is not accessible, they've literally built built the roads or cleared off the, a path for us or, you know, a lot of volunteer time and people spending um, spending their time and energy to, 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 for something that they need and want and want to protect for the future. So um, in each case, I, I would say there isn't a simple answer to say, you know, what is the biggest challenge? I think in each place it's different. In some places it can be geological, you know, the water might be very deep or there may be water that has certain chemical fluoride, high fluoride content, for example. Um, in other cases, it may be that there's so much water that um, there's a risk of contamination by flooding um, and sort of protecting the water sources. 
So in each place, we look at the, the situation, what's already working, what are people already doing, and then how can we, how can we um, bo- provide some support and bolster those efforts. And uh, we work very closely with local partners in, the, in all of the countries where we work because that's a, an important part of just understanding um, what will and won't work in, in certain places. Tell our listeners where they can go and uh, learn more about WASH and uh, a little bit more about WaterAid America. So w- the best way to learn more is wateraid.org slash US. Um, and we are a global organization uh, focused specifically on water sanitation hygiene. We have a very strong link with health and health professionals are some of our biggest supporters because they understand um, the importance of water sanitation hygiene to good health. And there are lots of ways to support. Obviously, financially is uh, one, one way to support. Um, it doesn't have to be large amounts of money. We have supporters that do a, a monthly, you know, 10 or $20 a month donation. We have people who um, learn more themselves and then get their friends and families involved. We have people who write letters in their local papers. There are lots and lots of different ways to get involved, but the good place to start is is uh, from our website. Serena Prabasi, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you'll come back. I learned a lot today. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, for this health supplier segment with Serena Prabasi, CEO of WaterAid America. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.